Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Tan and welcome to Providence Money Wisdom, an original podcast inspired by my book Money Wisdom, Simple Truths for Financial Wellness. In this podcast, I'll be sharing simple financial truths to guide you in navigating through the minefields of misinformation and false promises in order to achieve financial security and peace of mind. Insurance as savings, think again. When I started out my career as an insurance advisor in the late 90s, I was taught that insurance was a good instrument to use to accumulate wealth. Not only did it offer protection against death and disability and give interest rates higher than bank interest rates, it was also a systematic and organized way of savings. It was not until many years later that I discovered that this was only half of the truth. Today, I still hear many people sharing this same philosophy. In this episode, I hope to dispel this myth that many have believed for a long time. The so-called advantages of insurance as a savings tool. For those who advocate the use of insurance as a savings tool, here are some of the reasons they actively promote. Yeah. Firstly, higher interest rates than bank rates. Currently, bank interest rates are at an all-time low. Instead of leaving your money in the bank, you should park your money with insurance companies that will give you a higher return for your funds. Second reason, additional protection. Besides getting a higher return for your money, you get additional protection. In the event of your death, disability, or even a diagnosis of a major illness, your objective of accumulating towards a certain financial objective can still be achieved. This is because the insurance policy you own will pay a lump sum to you or your loved ones. Thirdly, safety. Besides accumulating your money at higher interest rates and having the protection element, your money is being invested in a safe instrument. Well, these are some of the reasons, but what is the problem? To be fair, there is some truth in what is being promoted about using insurance as a savings tool. It does generally give a higher interest rate than bank deposits and provide you with protection. It does also, to a certain extent, provide a safe haven or a safer haven for investing. However, it does come with a cost. Before you decide to put your hard-earned money into it, you would be better off seeing the full picture. So consider these points. Firstly, no liquidity. Yes, insurance does offer you a higher interest rate than bank deposits, averaging maybe 2.5% and maybe 1% respectively for the bank interest. However, we are not comparing apples with apples. Bank deposits are meant for short-term parking of your monies. They are meant to be liquid, which means that you can get your money out without any loss of capital in the shortest possible time. They are also flexible in that there is no commitment to continue um, depositing monies into your account. They naturally come with a lower interest. Insurance, however, is a long-term commitment. It is not as liquid as cash in the bank. If you need money suddenly or you need to stop your contribution, I mean premiums, you will most likely have to suffer a loss if you cash it out prematurely. Of course, you need not surrender the policy, but instead take a policy loan. But it comes with a cost. You need to put it back what you take out plus interest. And the interest will depend on the insurance companies that you insure with. But suffice it to say, it's pretty high. The second point, protection comes with a cost. Yes, insurance does provide you with the additional protection against death, disability and even major illness. However, it does not come free. You have to pay for it. Do you know that almost every single dollar that you pay for your insurance policy in the first few years goes to your agents as commission and to the insurance companies as mortality charges? I mean, that is the cost of insuring you. Only what is left is then being invested. So, don't think that it is free. Certainly, I'm not against paying for the insurance. The most basic and crucial question that we need to ask ourselves is, do we need the additional coverage in the first place? And if your answer is yes, is this the best way to do it? If the answer is no, then you should not be paying for something that you do not need. 
Well, the next point is exposed to equity markets as well. Yes, insurance does provide you with some safety to a certain extent. Part of your maturity benefit is guaranteed. But I'm sure you realize that most of the time, the guaranteed component is only a small component of the overall benefit. Compared to what you have invested plus your opportunity cost, you would have forgone a substantial pool of money. Besides, your monies placed with the insurance companies are also being invested in the stock market, bond market, and so on. They are also subject to market risk. It is no surprise that in years when the markets have been bearish, whether it be the bond market or the equities market, many insurance companies adjusted their bonus rates downwards. So insurance being a safe instrument perhaps may just be a perception after all. No flexibility is the next point. In addition to all of whatever I've said earlier, if you decide on using insurance as your savings tool, you have to accept the fact that you will have to forego flexibility. The flexibility to stop saving if you cannot for some good reason and the flexibility to change the investment manager if it is not producing the results you want and the flexibility to cash out all your savings if there is an emergency. If you have to do all of that, you will either lose coverage or lose money. So, what are your alternatives? Having understood the bigger picture better, what can you do? First, decide whether you need a specific insurance. If so, separate your need for insurance from your need or desire to invest or save your money. For the insurance part, buy an insurance plan that is without profits, like a term plan that meets your needs. Simply put, whether you need insurance to cover you for your entire life or for a fixed number of years, pay only for the protection part of the insurance and nothing extra. For the savings part, invest it directly using low-cost index funds or ETFs or maybe similar instruments such as market-based, evidence-based funds from those that we carry, like the Dimensional Fund Advisors. But, well, take note of the caveat. The problem with buying a without-profits insurance plan and investing the difference yourself is if you do not actually invest the difference. In this case, well, it may be better off letting the insurance companies invest it for you. Another problem is that you may not know how to invest your money properly. For example, you buy stocks without a good knowledge of how stock markets work or you follow the herd to buy the flavor of the month, unit trust and so on. In a nutshell, you lack knowledge or confidence to create a diversified portfolio for yourself with a suitable asset allocation and you do not have the time to closely monitor your investments and rebalance your portfolio. A good approach then is to seek a trusted advisor to help you construct and monitor a portfolio for you. So now what? Well, if you depend solely on using insurance as a savings tool to reach your financial objective, you may have to set aside a significant part of your monthly income to accumulate. Be prepared to do so or be prepared to do so for a long time. We all know that insurance simply gives a higher interest rate than bank deposits and nothing else. Beyond that, the returns are not exciting. This is because, as the name implies, insurance is insurance. It is primarily a protection tool and not a savings tool. Unfortunately, putting insurance into life insurance or rather putting money into life insurance and investments is a zero-sum game. The more you put your money into life insurance, the lesser you have to invest in order to achieve your long-term financial goals. If you are able to use the correct instrument for the correct purpose, that is, if you learn to separate protection from investment, you may have a better chance of achieving most if not all of your financial goals. Thank you for tuning in to Providence Money Wisdom. I will be back soon with the next episode. For more information on my book or Providence services, kindly visit providence.com. I'll see you the next time. All analysis, views or opinions from interviews 
recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or a recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability for any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein. All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited.